NASA and Elon Musk just made an insane discovery on Mars. This is no shocking news that one million people will be building a new civilization of humans on Mars in some years, by that I mean decades, although we are still a long way from making certain. With Elon Musk and NASA at the front line, gradually but surely we are getting there. Even though things seem to be going nicely, a recent discovery on Mars by Elon Musk, NASA is set to change everything. Did they finally find the existence of alien life on Mars? Does this discovery impact our habitation of Mars? Compared to other planets, Mars is the better option. Our nearest neighbors, Mercury and Venus, are just like microwaves, which as you might have guessed is unfit for habitation. Such is the sheer amount of temperature waiting to crush the lungs and dry out the skin of any man or spacecraft that even tried to come near to those planets. The two planetary bodies are almost inaccessible and we attempt to keep our goals of becoming extraterrestrial beings in check when taking those hot zones in account. Other planets would have been much better options if only they didn't have cold temperatures far below what the human body could adapt to. Agencies like NASA and SpaceX have set up a renewed push to find out how suitable it would be to live on any of these planets. What we have now is a burning rush to discover the slightest sign of life within the crust of Mars, the only planet that is plausibly habitable. We put a probability on it due to some unknown factors that have averted humans from making a birth on the Martian. Several things include the dense atmosphere and yes, the inherent cold. Mars might not be as cold as other planets, but it still consists of crushing atmospheric pressure. There's harm to human health, even though the numerous gases that combine to form the atmosphere are less volatile than observed. In any case, we are past the fact of trying to consider the plausibility of Mars having once been a great civilization and used to have people or aliens as you might like in sci-fi movies. It is high time we accept the fact that we are the only ones prevailing in the solar system and Earth has only just evolved enough to be able to house all of us. Other planets are not so friendly. Musk has been preening eye to eye with NASA's research through their probes and rovers that have been sent to the Martian atmosphere to look into the solid natural landscapes and see if the red planet is similar to our Earth. It is engrossing what has been found in the last five years with the possible discovery of water trails, underground rivers, geysers, and potential springs that may have existed at some point in the planet's evolution. Scientists are checking for signs of water that have made progress through NASA's Curiosity rover, which probed in the right spots and found smooth, rounded pebbles what seemed to be a river. The river must have been at least ankle to hip deep but is nowhere to be found. Now it is all dried up along with some lakes surrounding Mount Sharp, a unique landform on Mars. The rock of Mount Sharp is about a thousand feet high and could very well have been just mud under a huge body of water. The ones that flowed in that region are called the Gale Crater. Carbon dating would probably let you know about the rivers and lakes in this area that might have existed three million years ago. Whatever the source of the brute force that carved out the crater is uncertain to us, but it seems like it has been there for a while. As usual, some of the things worth bearing in mind when evaluating if there was ever a body of water like that would be to investigate if it could have supported living microbes. Therefore, the Curiosity rover took a few samples of soil here and there for examination. The result from the robotic rover indicated that the sample had major ingredients – sulfur, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and carbon – curiosity attained by drilling in what the sciences refer to as the sheep bed mudstone. These crucial elements should open up a door in your mind when you think about just how important these elements are to any life here on Earth. And if it is being discovered on Mars as well, we are allowed to dream of plants and microorganisms being capable of thriving on the crust of Mars. Other material content of the samples included clay and certain salts. This led scientists to deduce that the water that had once flowed there was fresh water and equally drinkable. Scientists ruled out the plausibility of it being salt water because the salt content was too low. The Mars rover also discovered more organic rocks in the rock beds of Mars. 
Unlike earlier expeditions, the Curiosity rover was equipped with a special drill that could enable it to make holes in rocky formations, thus effectively extracting samples from the rocks. But mind you, these samples do not represent the plausibility of life ever existing on Mars in the past or present. But it is a good sign for the future, I mean, why not? We are seeing the indications of raw ingredients crucial to support life, which is a good way to start. Some of these ancient organic materials can be utilized to back up new studies. Basically, we feel like we are now more aware of the nature of the red planet. It also put us in the right direction. Another amazing discovery is the presence of active methane in the atmosphere. The Mars rover is armed with laser technology, which is referred to as the tunable laser spectrometer capable of detecting atmospheric methane levels. It can tell us if there is an increase in the level of methane over a period. Why is this finding of methane a win-win? Methane is deemed to be one of the core carbon compounds that is effortlessly produced by living organisms. This further brings forth the plausibility that microorganisms or plants can thrive on Mars. Although there has been no such observation to demonstrate that they recently exist, scientists are investigating the other option. The methane might have been yielded due to the rocks and water continuously reacting. There is no proof of water on the surface of Mars, so it's hard to put the finger on what could have been increasing the methane levels in the atmosphere. If there's anything we are afraid of about Mars, it's the frightening radiation levels, as if that is not bad enough already on Earth. NASA has declined to send astronauts to Mars because the radiation is too high for them to function without personal protective equipment. Taking into account that it might set back plans to occupy the planet for a few years. The rover has also found the galactic cosmic rays that are frequently produced from supernova explosions and solar energetic particles that were emitted from solar flares and high energy release from the Sun. These eliminate Mars' exploration for humans, and it could continue to be so. Musk appears to know how to overcome the radiation and the possible low temperature that swathes the Mars atmosphere. According to him, we could heat it up with a bit of our own kind of planet thermostat. Or else, we can only dream of coming up with secure ways by which astronauts can land on Mars to actually do some work that will eventually advantage human progression from being Earthlings to Martians. There might be many bright sides for which we have to thank the Mars atmosphere, such as the heavy components of hydrogen, carbon, and argon, and their isotopic forms. They seem to give us a hint into what the actual atmosphere of Mars was like and how it could indicate that it used to have so much water flowing across and beneath the surface. We've always inquired about how Mars lost its water. If we had to suggest an answer about the observations of the MAVEN orbiter, it lost all its water through the top of the atmosphere. For us, that might signify some intense evaporation because of heat from the sun, but wouldn't all that fall back to the ground when the clouds eventually cool down? Unless the water cycle works differently on Mars, the planet is just too barren to have it compared to Earth, which stays a mystery much like every other hindrance that once stood in the way of mankind's development. We will certainly overcome this someday. The spacecraft that will lift off settlers on Mars is very well near finishing. The starship is vast and work is moving forward with its design. We hope the preliminary work on Mars will be able to catch up with our quickly expanding space exploration gadgets. We are certainly too eager to have our mini-metropolis or Mars with billions of people living in the new world.